Hey guys, so today we're going to be talking about logarithmic differentiation. So there's really going to be two cases where you use logarithmic differentiation. Case one is if you have a very complicated function that you need to find the derivative of. We'll look at two examples where the function is just so complicated where I would have to use multiple derivative rules such as chain rule, quotient rule, product rule, etc. I would have to use multiple derivative rules in one function. So as opposed to doing that, we can use this thing called logarithmic differentiation. The other case that you're going to use logarithmic differentiation for is if there is a variable in the base and the exponent of your expression. So if you're watching this video, hopefully at this point you've seen something like y equals x squared and you used a basic power rule, you found 2x. Or you had y equals e to the x where the variable's in the exponent and we know that y prime is also e to the x. So up until this point, you've most likely seen either the variable as the base and then a number as the exponent or a number as the base and a variable as the exponent. Logarithmic differentiation is going to be the technique that we use if I have a variable in the base and the exponent of an expression. Let's look at a couple of examples. Number one, y is equal to x times x squared plus 5 to the fourth over the cube root of 3x plus 1. So if I were to take the derivative of this without using logarithmic differentiation, I would need a quotient rule, two chain rules, and a product rule. It would be a mess. So instead, I'm going to use logarithmic differentiation. And I'm going to write the steps out over here as I go. So your first step is going to be to ln both sides of the equation. Once I've ln both sides of the equation, I'm going to use log properties to rewrite the right-hand side of this equation or to expand that right side out. So the left side's going to stay the same. And on the right side, I'm first going to make this division subtraction, and I'm going to make this multiplication addition so that I have ln of x plus ln of x squared plus 5 to the fourth minus, now I'm doing that division, so minus ln of 3x plus 1 to the one third. I know that when I get to taking the derivative of this, that since it's a cube root, since it's a radical, I need to rewrite that as a fractional exponent. And my next line, I'm going to use log properties one more time to expand this just a tiny bit more. So I'm going to bring the exponent to the front here. So I have 4 ln x squared plus 5 minus 1 third ln of 3x plus 1. Once I've expanded this equation out, my third step is going to be to differentiate this equation. So on the left side, when I take a derivative, the derivative of ln y is 1 over y dy dx. That just comes from my implicit rules. On the right side, derivative of ln x is 1 over x. When I take the derivative of 4 ln of x squared plus 5, u is going to be x squared plus 5. And remember, the derivative of ln u is u prime over u. So I bring this coefficient down. u prime is 2x and u is x squared plus 5. Minus, I can bring down this one third, and I'm going to use the same rule, u prime over u. u prime in this case would be 3, and u is 3x plus 1. The last thing I need to do is actually solve for dy dx by just multiplying this entire equation by y. So when I do that, y times 1 over y cancels, so I have dy dx. And then on the right side, I have y times that whole expression. I can just bring it down. So 1 over x plus 8x over x squared plus 5 minus these 3s cancel. So just 1 over 3x plus 1. The very last step here is going to be to substitute in for y what it was equal to in the beginning. Since my original equation was in terms of x, I want dy dx to be in that form as well. So step five is substitute for y. When I do that, I have dy dx is equal to y becomes what it was equal to in the beginning, x times x squared plus 5 to the fourth over the cube root of 3x plus 1 times this whole thing that I found earlier. So 1 over x plus 8x over x squared plus 5 minus 1 over 3x plus 1. There is my final answer for dy dx. So this is by no means easy, but it is still less complicated than doing a product chain quotient rule from the beginning. So it does get a little messy, but 
it's still easier in a sense than the other option. Let's look at another example similar to this where I have an equation or an expression that is just too complicated to take the derivative of, so I'll use logarithmic differentiation to make this process a little bit easier. Number two, so if I were to take a derivative of this without using logarithmic differentiation, I would have a quotient rule, a product rule, and two chain rules all within one derivative. It would be a gigantic mess. So instead, I'm going to use logarithmic differentiation. So again, I start by LNing both sides of the equation. From there, I'm going to rewrite the right-hand side or expand it out using my log properties. So on the right side, I'm first going to make this multiplication addition. I'm also going to make this square root something to the half, and I'm going to bring that half to the front all in one step. So I have 1 half ln x squared plus 4x. So that takes care of the numerator. And then I'm going to subtract 3 ln 3x to the fifth minus 4x squared. So the subtraction changes up this division. And then I brought the three, that exponent, to the front just to save myself rewriting another line. Now that I've expanded out that right side using my log properties, I'm just going to differentiate this whole thing in respect to x. So the derivative of ln y is just 1 over y dy dx. And then for each of these, I'm just going to use the u prime over u rule. So in this first term, u prime is 3x squared plus 5 and u is x cubed plus 5x, plus I have a half times u prime is 2x plus 4, and u is x squared plus 4x. Lastly, I have 3, u prime is 15x to the fourth minus 8x, and u is 3x to the fifth minus 4x squared. I am going to take a 2 out of this term in the numerator and the denominator, so this just becomes 1, this becomes 1 and this becomes 2. That's all the simplification I can do there. I can't simplify anything here, and I also can't simplify anything there, so I'm just going to leave it alone. My next step is to multiply both sides of the equation or the entire equation by y. So when I do that, I have dy dx is equal to y times this whole thing. I'm just going to bring it down. Very last step here is just to replace y with what it was equal to. So there is my final answer for dy dx. Again, our y just became what it was equal to all the way in the beginning, and then I just brought everything else down. Yes, again, this is still a little complicated, but it's a lot easier than the alternative of using all of those different differentiation techniques. Let's look at two examples now where we have case two, where I have a variable in the base and in the exponent of the equation. Number three, y is equal to x to the x. So in this one right away, since I have a variable in the base and a variable in the exponent, I know I have to use logarithmic differentiation. The same exact rules apply here as they did, or the same exact steps apply here as they did in number one and number two. So the first thing I'm going to do is just ln both sides. The second step is to rewrite the right side using your log properties. So this exponent can become multiplication in front so that I have x times ln x. From here, I just differentiate both sides. So the derivative of ln y is 1 over y dy dx. And on the right side, when I take a derivative, I have a product rule first, second. So first derivative of the second plus second derivative of the first. In my next line, I'm just going to clean up this right side and I'm going to multiply this whole thing by y. So now on the left side, I'm left with dy dx and then I have y times x times 1 over x is just 1 plus ln x. Very last step is just to substitute in for y. So y was equal to x to the x. So I have x to the x times 1 plus ln x, all set there. Let's look at one more example where I have a variable in the base and in the exponent. Number four, y is equal to tan x to the ln x. So first thing again that I'm going to do is just ln both sides of this equation. From here, I use my log properties to rewrite that right side. And now I just differentiate the entire equation. Derivative of ln y is 1 over y dy dx. And on the right side, I have a product rule. So first ln x, derivative of the second. When I do the derivative of ln tan x, I'm using the ln u rule, which says the derivative is u prime over u. So u prime, the derivative of tan, is secant squared, and u is just tan x, plus the second is ln of tan x. Derivative of the first would be 1 over x. 
From here, I'm solving for dy dx by multiplying my entire equation by y. So I have dy dx is equal to y times, I'm just going to write this as one fraction, so ln x secant squared x over tan x, plus I can write this as one fraction too, ln of tan x over x. Very last step here is to replace y with what it was equal to from the beginning. So I have dy dx is equal to tan x to the ln x times this entire expression. There is my final answer for number four. That's it for logarithmic differentiation. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Have a great day.